Well, bang, bang, my baby shot me down, such as the price of oil. You know, it's dropping like a stone. And we saw a major move up in the Dow today and also a fairly good move up in the metals. So, what the hell does that tell you for sure? It's deliberately being moved down in oil because that's, I mean, it's not, it's not something maybe, you know, you have one day it does that, but it's been dropped off about 40% or more in the last several months and that's not something to sneeze out you know that's that's a big deal that's a big deal so the powers that be are you know moving the markets uh i always have on the bottom one of my videos on all my videos actually in the notes about the uh oil markets and commodities markets been rigged since at least 2000 they even had the head of the the former head of the nymax is part of the lawsuit against that, you know, rigging of commodities in oil and silver and gold, but talking about everything, actually particularly oil, and any oil trader will tell you this, that, you know, they're rigged up and down. So, you know, I know a lot of people are talking about, you know, what the hell's the deal going on here because, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I tell you the truth, I think a lot of people are basically, you know, on rock star vodka that are, you know, following some of this alternative media stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that it, it is pretty obvious, and I've seen some alternative media actually point to the fact that the main reason oil is going down is it, it's to uh, get at Russia and Iran. And that's really in the interest of Saudi, too. Uh, it's a secondary thing to get at the competition from the shale oil industry in the United States, too. But, you know, it's all three. It's all three. Now, I did say that one thing Vlad could do is if he had his proxy, Iran, start a war with Saudi, it would take all that oil off the market and Russia would be rolling in cash, you know, because the oil prices would go up exponentially. Uh, you know, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do, but that's that's what I'd be doing because, you know, we're looking at things through two different colored eyes here because people have their preset opinions on a lot of things and... uh I can tell you one thing, that in reality, the stuff that's going on here, you know, a lot of people just don't, they never really been out of the United States except on vacation. They never really lived outside in the United States for a long period of time. You know, it's one of the advantages of being in the military if you're overseas for many years at a time. You get to kind of know what goes on in other countries and you get to hear things and you say to yourself, I'm glad I live in the USA, despite some of the garbage that goes on over here it's still a hell of a lot better. And, uh, you know, it's almost like you're thinking that a foreign power is going to help Americans. Eh -eh, no way. It's sad. It's a sad thing that people think that, but they ain't getting it, man. They ain't getting it. I'll tell you that right now. They're seeing things one way, and in the reality of it, it's another way, you know. They got on a blue-filtered contact lens, and they're whatever the hell they're doing. I don't know what it is, but... They're not really seeing the situation really the way it exists because the Western elite banksters ain't nothing compared to some of the crap that goes on in some of the other countries. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway, uh, you know, anyway, so we got the Christmas season coming up here, and I know there's a lot of pressure on people uh, to get all the holiday shopping done, but, um, you know, maybe you should be buying some coins too, and the hell with the freaking shopping because. The coins are getting, they are pretty low. They're pretty low. Now, when this market does come down more, it is possible for the, for the metals to go even lower because of these oil prices. You know, it's like they still could make money on silver at lower prices than it is now because oil's not 100 bucks a barrel anymore. It's 55 actually just below 55 And it's even that way on the Brent besides the WTI. So, uh, you know, the other thing is, uh, we got basically coming up for this next damn election here in uh, 2016. I don't like talking politics, but, you know, I'm going to tell you, just to give you a little straight-up scoop beforehand, you know, they were talking like Jeb Bush might run, and he said he might not run. Well, it looks like he is pretty much pushed Mitt Romney out of the race. It's either going to be Rand Paul or Jeb Bush. And I can tell you right now, I'm so sick of freaking Bush running for president. Even though I generally vote Republican, I'll never vote for that guy, man. Never! 
You know, it's like we got the fire-breathing Jack Dragon and, you know, the evil eye on one side. You know, I mean, what the hell, man? What kind of choice is that? And I almost think it's Jeb Bush versus Hillary. Damn it, this sucks, but, you know... <laughs> You know, that's that's the thing, you know, I'm not gonna I'm gonna take other. But you know the problem is nobody does that. Nobody does that, man. So anyway, if you're out there Christmas time, here's Santa Claus is, you know, making some treats for you, whatever the hell he's doing. I don't know what he's doing here. Santa's got some damn imagination, I could tell you that right now, you know. He's uh what is he doing? Grinding up evergreen trees and putting them in a bowl? I don't know what he's doing. But I can tell you this that there's a lot of stuff going on, actually. But let me look at the markets here for real quick, because like today you saw the Dow go all the way to hell up. It was down like almost, you know, it went up 421 points. Now that's the first time crude oil's been below 55. I don't. I think it's even going to go lower. And I'm going to tell you a little more about this deal. And and I know silver, gold, platinum, palladium. Well, you know, palladium went up pretty good. Not too bad, but. Really, the, the real news was the Dow went up. But I'm going to tell you a little more about what's going on with this deal. Because Saudi, even though they're, they're getting hurt by these crude oil prices. You know, when you're seeing these crude oil prices this low, they're getting hurt by them too. But they got, and it's causing them to tap into their reserves. But the deal is, Saudi can last a lot longer than other countries. The first one, what they're actually doing is they're going to cause OPEC to break apart. But I don't really think they give a damn because I think it's like they're acting as a proxy for the U.S. in this policy. And, um, you know, that's one way. That's what Russians are telling you the truth about that stuff. I think it is U.S. policy. But I think it's dangerous because I know Vlad is not going to give up power, man. He is not going to give up power for nothing. And, uh, you know, he's going to be just as crazy as this this lady here, like where a wife stabs a husband with a squirrel. He's going to act pretty damn irrational, and he's not going to give up power at all. And uh, I see the situation could get pretty damn bad. I hate to freaking be a bearer of bad news. I hate to be somebody that's saying something like that. I know there's other channels that are constantly, you know, you know saying the end is near and the sky is falling and, you know, I mean, crying out loud. I mean, it's every day. They say that's all they say. But if Vlad is pushed into a corner, um, from my personal, you know, observation of how he is, I don't, I don't think he, he, he would strike back really hard. He'd go to war. He, he'd go all out. He'd go all out. He's like me. <laughs> so you know, he's almost as crazy as the old lady here that stabs the husband with the squirrel. You know what I mean? She got pushed too hard, and, you know, she grabbed the squirrel, and she stabbed the husband, right? So that's what Vlad would do, something like that, you know? So anyway, anyway, nobody's an angel when they're pushed too hard. But, you know, considering that Vlad was old KGB for so long, and that guy ain't playing games, man, I... He, I just can't. I, I just can't believe the number of people that think this guy is an angel in some ways. I, I can't believe this crap on the internet. I mean, like, holy shit! Oh God, it's like, oh really, really? Oh man, you know, you're gonna tell me the Western elite are bad? I know that. I know that. He told me the Russian guys are good. Yeah. Anyway. Get sick of freaking even commenting on that shit anymore. How stupid could people be, man? They're all freaking bad, damn it. But, you know, I'm going to tell you this. There's another thing's going on where we're going to probably see other problems in the economy where it's going to fall. Reason is, you know, things aren't like la-la land. You know, everybody's linking. It's like a walk in a park right now. The oil prices are going down. People have got more money to spend on discretionary spending. The markets are going up. Even your metals are going up today. You're thinking, oh, good, you know. Yeah, it's cheaper to fill up your car. It's cheaper to heat your house with fuel oil. It's the market. If you got money in the stocks, unless you got them in the mining stocks. Well, even the mining stocks probably went up because of the silver, gold, platinum, and plating went up. But there's another side to this whole deal. For one, there's a lot of derivatives betting that have been betting heavy that oil is going to be going up forever. In other words, it's almost like now I don't want to point to the links where I read this stuff because I don't I didn't read it out of the major media and I don't totally trust it, but it, I think it does make sense because 
I know during the time of the housing, they were betting that it was going housing was going up forever. And that did not happen. And the consensus was that oil is going up forever. Well, so pretty much there's a lot of derivatives out there on a long position. And it's probably going to lead to a, a major problem where, you know, a lot of money's disappearing due to, to that reason. And the other thing is with the shale oil industry itself, uh, that's going to be another freaking implosion too because of all the bonds that were issued to, to finance them that were highly speculative. There's, they're, they're junk bonds. They're going to go to zero basically probably or the investors that are holding those bonds that are, you know, on the shale oil industry, they're going to be taking major haircuts. The other thing is, with the shale oil industry, like if we look from the recovery from 2008 till now, most of the recovery we had was in the shale oil industry. The industry that, that was actually bringing up the numbers for employment, and it was bringing up the numbers for the GDP. So now they're laying off all those people in the shale oil industry left and right because oil went from 100 something down to 55 or below 55. And it looks like it's continuing to go lower. So what's that going to tell you not only for the large sector, energy sector that consists of the S&P, what's it going to tell you about what happens with the jobs reports numbers? So anyway, hey, it looks like we got Anton Levain and James Mansfield here, so... You know, that would have been a good combination for president back in the, back in the day. I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> we know they're evil anyway, but we might as well be entertained at the same time, right? You know, it's like uh, everything we have that's politics, it's really like it's all, well, that's why they're all playing games with, you know, the entertainers, kissing babies and going to shows. and It's all a game for popularity. That's all it is, and that's substance, and... Unfortunately, a lot of American people just don't think beyond what they got to. They don't. They don't think too deep. They don't want to think too deep, and it's going to really take. You know, during the Revolutionary War, actually in the United States, when the United States was uh, became free from. I know people's going to say we didn't really become free from England or the king, but you know we did pretty much. Uh, it was only three percent of the people that were uh, fighting against the power. I know one thing, most of the people in the U.S. are not really fighting against the power. Actually, they're being led by the nose by the devil himself. Now, Anton LaVey, I mean, you know, I got this picture here of Anton LaVey and Jane Mansfield. I know some people, like, think of him like, he, you know, he was more of a showman guy than anybody. He was really, I don't know, this guy was a character, man. It's, it's almost humorous, but it's kind of funny. But um, too bad she got killed, though, you know. That was a shame. But the thing is, you know, it's like, you know, everything is a show with politics. And people in the United States, they just take whoever gives them the best sound bites. Even Ron Paul, he's a load of it too, man. The guy just talks a nice talk. He doesn't, he, he, ain't, he doesn't have the balls to freaking stop anything. He just talks the talk. He didn't even have the balls to challenge uh, a lot of things that were going on during the primaries where he could have really done a lot better. You think he's going to challenge the Federal Reserve? You think Rand Paul's going to challenge all that stuff he talks about? Nah. Nah. You know, i tell you the truth. I wish we actually did have a black president for a change instead of freaking Mr. Ethiopian freaking Obama, whatever the hell that guy's name. What is it? Kenya. 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 <laughs> Ethiopian. I don't know what the hell he came from, man. I forgot. But he, he's a... Uh, the guy's a the guy's a Karl Marx communist wimp, man. I'm like, screw this shit. You know, we 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 never even had a black president. This is a bunch of bullshit. I'd vote for Mike Tyson. I think I'm gonna write his name and tell you the truth next time. I'm so disgusted with all the bullshit that's going on that I'm gonna write in Mike Tyson. That's what I'm gonna do for next time. I'm, the hell with Jeb Bush. The hell with Hillary. And I'm gonna tell you, the economy is probably gonna. I know you've been hearing this for a long time, but um, you know, just to go rehash something from before, too. Warren Buffett, he's got, um, I forget how many dollars. He's got $28 billion worth of cash he's sitting on. And he's never sat on that much cash in his whole time that 
he's been in Berkshire Hathaway because he's basically assuming that the markets are going to correct or you know it's, excuse me uh, and it's costing him it's 55 billion in cash excuse me 55 billion in cash and it's costing him almost 30 million dollars a day just to stay out of the markets and you know it's like nobody knows when it's going to correct but you know the big obvious sign it's are is that um you know it's going to correct like crazy because the big obvious signs are the oil the oil i mean it's staring you right in the face oil prices are good in one way but the oil shale oil industry in the united states was actually the main thing that was supporting the recovery i'm not really Hating doom and gloom here. I'm telling you a fact. The main part of the recovery, the one, the thing that was bringing up, you know, the green shoots or whatever they want to call it, where the GDP was going up slightly, was the bright spot was the shale oil industry. That was employing people, and it was contributing a lot to the GDP of the United States. Now that the price is going down, a lot of them are just shutting down. Not everything, but a lot of them are. And you know, the other thing is what's going to happen with those bonds and also what's going to happen with the energy stocks, which is almost 20 energy stocks and energy exploration and research and development is almost 25 percent of the S&P. What's going to happen with the quarterly reporting and the end of the year reporting that's going to that's going to be released in early January? How's that going to affect the markets? It's going to affect the markets greatly. It should. I mean, you know, I don't know how the hell I don't know how many times they could pull a rabbit out of the hat with this garbage. But I, I could tell you right now that oil is, is being manipulated down to mainly punish Russia and I think that's a dangerous dangerous thing to do. But you know, if it's so damn obvious to me, I mean it's almost like these people on the top that are pulling this stuff, they're drinking rock star vodka, you know, electro electro juice here, lemonade, and I don't know what the hell they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, but, you know, if it's so obvious to me, maybe the whole plan is to start a major conflict. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. And, you know, I mentioned before that Soros, who's already starting to lose out on one-third of his short position. See, when they have a short position, all these guys always have a short position as a hedge, right? They do like 3% or something like that just to make sure they don't screw up, you know? But... George Soros has got a 16% of his entire wealth is a short position. He's already, I think, part of that or one-third of that, he's already going bye-bye. But that don't matter because the rest of it has got till like almost a year before it goes bye-bye. And that's what's telling me this stuff is going to crack pretty soon, you know? They know what's going on, man. They know what's going on. It's almost like, you know, when the housing industry was going up or the tech boom was going up or even when silver was going up you know when, when silver yeah back just think when silver was going up at the end of 2010 it got to 30 bucks everybody was saying it's too high it's too high i'm nervous and it comes down a little bit then it really charged up a real lot and it's over 40 42 45 48 oh my god oh it's gonna go to 100 and it drops and here it is today below 20 right well below 20, right? So, I mean, that's really what's going to happen probably with the stocks, man. Bang, bang, my baby shot me down. Actually, a lot of mess, the best uh, mainstream analysts are telling you long-term corporate bonds and the general equities are going to be the lousiest investments to be in for the next 10 years. So what the hell's left? <laughs> what's left, man? What's left? I mean, even though if you're down on the commodities... You know, I'm going to tell you this. If you actually, uh, this is just as almost how you got to be because, you know, if you were in, you know, when they had 911 and the stocks went down, right? And a lot of people lost a lot of money back then. A lot of people lost money during the financial crisis and they sued the banks, they sued their brokers and all this kind of crap. Actually, actually, they were all sold off. They sold off. They lost maybe 75% of what they had in there, right? And this is a very important lesson. If those people did not sell off, they would have actually recovered and made money a few years later because it would have bounced. And that is exactly the type of crap that's going to happen with your metals. 
Even though it's depressed, it's been depressed, it looks hopeless. When it bounces, it's going to bounce higher than it should go to. And you're going to be scared to sell it, but, you know, I'm not going to be thinking, hey, I'll take them dollars, man. So anyway, uh, just chill out. I, but the real bad news is, I think Vlad is being pushed in a corner, man. I mean, I don't like the guy, really, per se, but... I don't like Obama. <laughs> I don't like Obama. I don't like Biden either. I don't like Hillary. I mean, I, you know, what the hell, man? And Romney and Bush, and I'm like, screw all that garbage, you know? And I don't like Rockefeller or nothing, you know? I'm not saying that. But I'm just telling you that uh, knowing his personality, from what I could tell, he's not going to he's not gonna back down, and it spells disaster for world peace, man. I hate to say that, but... I think that's the reality situation. But if there's disaster for world peace, your commodities are going to be way the hell up there. And go and actually, you know, during a type when there's a lot of war going on, there's is an you know a lot of people don't know this, but there's one commodity out there. If there's a real bad global conflict, there's one com well you already you probably already know what it's going to be. One commodity out there that really goes up a lot. It's worth a lot. It's oil. So, as bad as it sounds, there's always glitter on around. But, you know, it's just like, you don't want no war over the United States, man. I know that. You don't want that. You don't want that to happen. But it may happen. I don't know. I don't know. Hate to paint the doom and gloom, but there's crazier things that happen, you know. And, uh, you know, hopefully Santa will just get you some good evergreen stuff here for Christmas. And, uh, you know, have a good Christmas at least, you know. Stuff isn't going to happen right away, and it can always change for the brighter in the long run. You don't know. You don't know. It's just that I'm smelling something up with this deal because <laughs> I personally wouldn't be screwing around trying to piss Vlad off on purpose. I think he needs to be criticized, but, you know, he, they're, they're like boxing him in, so they're going to, you know. But I guess that's maybe what the plan is, you know? Ugh. Hate to say it. Hate to say it, but that's what it looks like. You know, if it's so obvious what the plan, what it's going to lead to to me, I think that's maybe what they intend to happen. But, you know, what can I kind of tell you, man? What can I tell you? I don't know. I don't know. It's crazier shit that happens. Just watch out, you know, if your old lady gets pissed off, she grabs a squirrel, she tries to stab you this Christmas. Because there's a lot of things going on, but, you know... <laughs> Be an angel, be an angel, you know. And I, I have to say, though, that it's like when things change, they change fast. I remember so, I, I got a lot of experience in this accounting finance garbage. You know, I call it garbage. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to ever say where I worked or anything because I don't ever want to say, because what I'm talking now, I'm talking like real calm, real, I mean, real plain. And, I don't want to say anything I say would be representing somebody else. You know? That's one thing. But I can tell you that during the tech boom, nobody believed it was going to go down. And uh, During the freaking, you know, the, the real estate boom, nobody believed it would go down. Uh, you know, nobody believed it would even go up. You know, when it goes up, things seesaw. That's what happens. It's like you got to have the patience for the road roller coaster ride. It's actually going to be tougher for you to sell silver or gold when it goes way up because everybody in the world in the alternative media is going to tell you the dollar is going to freaking zero. And I'm going to tell you, it's not unless the whole United States got blown into obliteration, which I hope that don't happen. But it's not because the, the U.S. dollar is going to be a currency of the USA for a long time. Even if the USA loses clout, even if the USA loses more of its industry, even if the USA loses some of its military power and, you know, whatever, you know, economic power and all this other garbage, the US dollar is still going to be the currency of the USA for a long time. So if you're going to get a lot more dollars later on for your gold and silver, I mean, it's going to be hard to pick the exact height, but you're going to be afraid to sell because everybody else is going to be telling you 
it's going you it's the dollar's going to zero and it's the only your money you're gonna have is golden yeah right anyway i'm probably gonna get a lot of arguments about that but i really know what the deal is because david morgan i'll tell you this again david morgan and eric sprott they sold on thursday april 28th 2011 David Morgan, he said he got lucky. Okay, I, I've said this many times, so he didn't tell anybody else he was doing it till after the fact. Oh, he just got lucky. So, you know, they're going to be telling you it's going to go to $800 an ounce, $1,000 an ounce. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, anyway, I'm warning you ahead of time because when things go up, they go up too high. Anyway, over and out.